Hey there. In this segment on my series that are discussing proteins, is discussing proteins, um, I am going to elaborate a little bit more on chirality, which I spoke about in a last um, video, and also talk about how amino acids are classified. So with that, I will share my screen. And I bring up this set of molecules, two amino acids that are mirror images of one another, and <clears throat> that exhibits a property called chirality. In a chi uh, with chirality, the way that you can have chiral molecules is if you have a carbon atom that has four different things attached to it. So if this is the carbon atom right here, there's a hydrogen attached, an amino group, a carboxylic acid group, and then a side chain. So when that happens, you can have uh, molecules that are mirror images of one another and they're isomers, they're special isomers, and they're referred to as right-handed and left-handed isomers. So I just wanted to give a couple of examples of how this relates to chemistry. It's very applicable in pharmaceuticals and medicines. Um, sometimes a right-handed or a left-handed isomer of a particular molecule will be will have take certain characteristics and um, its mirror image will be completely different. So here's one example right here. Um, methamphetamine enantiomers. Enantiomers are, um, it's another term for uh, isomers that are mirror images of one another. So we have the right-handed, the dextromethamphetamine, and the left-handed, and they are just mere images of one another. The, the dextro, the right-handed, is the methamphetamine that you hear about that is highly addicted, highly addictive uh, street drug that induces euphoria. It's a central nervous system stimulant. Um, the mere image of it, which is put together almost exactly the same way with just a slight little change, is found in over-the-counter uh, nasal decongestants. It's a vasoconstrictor. So um, these are two, uh, one example, methamphetamine, of how the mirror images of one another can take on completely different characteristics. Um, now these are not amino acids, um, but I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on um, examples of chirality in chemistry. Another one is uh, thalidomide, and um, there's a term when we're talking about um, chiral compounds. If you have a mixture that has equal amounts of the left-handed and the right-handed isomers, oh, excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze, but it passed. It's called a racemic mixture. So uh, thalidomide is a medicine um, introduced in the 50s, I think, used to treat morning sickness. And they, they knew that there's an active ingredient in there for sure that was very effective at doing that. And um, unfortunately, the left-handed um, version of uh, thalidomide is very, very dangerous. Here comes the steez. Oh, it passed again. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I probably will end up sneezing though. Anyway, the left-handed um, version of um, thalidomide causes birth defects, severe birth defects, and um, millions of babies were either uh, miscarried or um, were born with birth defects. The, the right-handed version of thalidomide cures Morning sickness. Is it a yawn? Is it a sneeze? I can't tell. So um, the S in here stands for um, sinistral. 
and uh, sometimes you'll see it like a, a left-handed molecule referred to as an S because um, uh, the the word sinistral um, actually uh, is connected to left-handedness um, back in the olden days, and I'm not sure when this actually was, but they felt that people who had an affinity to use their left hand, uh, that that was a sign of evilness, uh, something sinister. So the words sinistral and left-handedness were uh, two terms that were kind of used interchangeably with another. So here's a link to some more information about the thalidomide disaster that occurred. And um, I'll also include this video wherever I, uh, I'll include the, this particular video here wherever I include my videos. So, oh. Uh, In the end of the last video, I asked you to look at this. Um, this is a sampling of, it's not a sampling, it's a complete set of the 20 amino acids. There are a couple of them that are doubled up. Uh, I have two cysteines here, and there's a reason there are two cysteines as part of the kit. There are also two histidines. Um, I am not sure what the reason is behind that. Um, I'll have to read up on that. So we can categorize our amino acids into four basic groups. And we have two amino acids that are acidic and they, this side chain um, is charged. It's a carboxylate ion, COO, with a negative. And I will have another view of this coming up in just a moment where we can look at it from a different angle. But um, this, these side chains on these acidic amino acids are certainly negatively charged. Um, and the, there are two that are basic, and these are filled with nitrogen. That nitrogen often will pick up an extra proton to become protonated and end up with a plus charge. So nitrogens are associated with picking up the extra hydrogen and becoming positive charged. Uh, all of the ones up near the top are very rich in hydrogen and carbon and they take on a characteristic that's very hydrophobic because they are nonpolar. And then in here we have some, um, there's some color coding here. We've got some white ones that are hydrophilic and they, they are not charged like the acidic negative side chains and the basic positive side chains. I'm really sorry. It seriously feels like I'm going to sneeze and it just is, I'm yawning and I'm not even that tired. I don't know why. Sorry. I'm not going to have time to edit this. So take it as it is, I guess. Um, but <laughs> these hydrophilic polar chains are, they're overall neutral, but they have some regions of charge because of an unequal sharing, um, the polarity occurring within the molecule. So here's a, uh, another view I asked my husband to help me with making the pictures look a little nicer. And, um, it ended up a little bit blurry. Uh, one thing that I do want you to notice on here, each amino acid has a name, and there's also a three letter, um, three-letter um, representation and also a one-letter representation of each amino acid. So here's another angle. Um, with this angle you can see the colors a little bit better. So our hydrophobic, the gray in here represents carbon atoms. There are two that have just a, a single atom. This glycine is white. It's actually just a hydrogen here. So glycine um, is the only amino acid that has, is not chiral. And I think I had talked about that at one point, but I'll show you that again. So glycine has our central carbon. It has the carboxylic acid group. 
and its R chain is actually a hydrogen. And um, then it has the hydrogen. And this cannot be considered a chiral molecule because in order for chirality to occur, that carbon has to have four different uh, groups or uh, branches coming off of it. So the glycine is, is that, it's just a hydrogen there. Um, the yellow is sulfur, red is oxygen, and the blues are nitrogens. So here's a, a side view too. My husband helped me with this. Um, we tried to make it just look a little bit nicer, more professional. And I thought this had a bit of an artistic flair. But here you can really see the um, each of these amino acids in this kit have a color-coded band. And the the hydrophilic ones here, the the neutral, uh, not neutral, the uncharged. Um, polar amino acids have the white, uh, the basics have the blue, the, the <clears throat> acidics have the red, and then hydrophobic has um, the yellow. Um, cysteine is uh, kind of a special case here because it does uh, result in some very specific interactions. Um, called disulfide bridges that we will elaborate on more in the future. So, um, so just to summarize, um, we have four categories, four, four classification um, categories for our amino acids. And I'll reference the colors in the kit. You know that I really like colors. Um, those nonpolar amino acids, which are uncharged, um, very hydrophobic, uh, because they're very, very rich in hydrogen and carbon. Our polar amino acids, overall, the amino acid is, itself is uncharged. Um, it's, um, but within some of those covalent bonds, within the molecule, those electrons are not shared equally, which results in regions of charge. And a way we can recognize them is if we see like alcohols, uh, or amides, um, some thiols, uh, nitrogens, and we can recognize the polar amino acids. And I'll give you some strategies for that. The acidic amino acids um, are also hydrophilic. They contain, a, that side chain contains a carboxylic acid group, and they have an overall negative charge. And the basic Amino acids have an overall positive charge. Um, they have those side chains containing nitrogen. So um, with uh, classification of amino acids that are neutral versus acidic or basic, a strategy that you can use to categorize amino acids is to look at the number of carboxylic acid groups on the molecule and compare it to the number of amino groups on the molecule. If they are equal to each other, it is a neutral amino acid. And remember, there are two acidic amino acids. So for two of the 20 amino acids, there will be more carboxylic acid groups than amino groups. And there are two out of the 20 basic amino acids that will um, have more amino groups relative to the number of carboxylic acid groups. So we'll just go through some examples. I want to point out some things for you to be able to recognize if you're given um, a bunch of structures of amino acids in a list and you are asked to categorize them, you have to be able to have the skills to categorize them as nonpolar, hydrophobic, uncharged, polar, um, acidic, or basic. So here are some of the non-polar amino acids. And one thing that you'll notice with these, so they each have our central carbon, and this is the hydrogen that's attached to it. Um, here's our central carbon. 
there's our central carbon, and here it is here. We have the carboxylate group, the amino group, carboxylate, amino, carboxylate, or carboxylic acid. Um, I say carboxylate because sometimes this hydrogen, which is very loosely held onto that, um, will um, be lost and actually get transferred to the amino group to form this fitter ion. Um, anyway, the, all of our R chains are right here. You'll notice very rich in hydrocarbons. Um, there is a sulfur in the methionine, but um, very, very hydrocarbon rich, nonpolar, insoluble in water, hydrophobic. Here are some more nonpolar um, amino acids. And again, you can see lots of um, carbons and hydrogens in those. Here are some of our polar ones. Again, we have an amino group, the carboxylic acid group, the central carbon, and then the R chains are red. So some things to look for. When you look at the structure, you see here that carbon is bonded to a nitrogen um, and also, so you have some polarity there between those two molecules. And then you also have some polarity here between the carbon, in this carbonyl group, we have our um, oxygens more electronegative. They're going to be pulling those shared electrons towards it to have a slightly negative charge. So this is um, an amide. Um, here is a thiol. That SH is a thiol, a very polar group. Uh, here we have another amide. Um, glycine is is a a little bit controversial and um, it very much behaves like a nonpolar amino acid once it becomes incorporated into a protein chain. So that's all I'm really going to say about that. Here we have an alcohol group. Here we have an alcohol group, another alcohol group. So we see the alcohol groups, the amides, the thiols within these molecules. We're looking at polar uncharged. And then we have our acidic and basic. Now, this is a counting game. In the acidic, we have, I'm gonna put a box around the amino groups. There is one amino group in each of them, and I'm going to put a circle around the carboxylic acid. So I have carboxylic acid group here, a carboxylic acid group there. So there are two carboxylic acid groups and only one amino group. In this one, there are two carboxylic acid groups and one amino group. And these will um, be acidic. They will end up taking on a negative charge once again because that hydrogen in that carboxylic acid group is so very loosely held in there that it often does get lost, leaving behind that carboxylate ion, that COO with the negative charge. If we look down below, I'll put a box about, around my amino groups and a circle around my carboxylic acid groups. So I have a carboxylic acid group there, there, there. I have amino, here's an amino. I have an amine there. I have an amine here, actually. I have an amine, an amine, and here. So these are very rich in nitrogens, very, um, prone to uh, picking up an extra hydrogen. Um, so whenever we have these nitrogens, it often picks up that extra hydrogen to become protonated. And we see that NH3 with a plus. So when that happens, these will take on an overall positive charge um, as one of their characteristics. So, um, I have this slide in here I meant not to. I uh, have another video that I'll be showing. I'll eventually embed it into this slideshow um, in this spot. I haven't had a chance to, but it's a model demonstration kit that I did earlier uh, today, uh, of which I will include that video. So just to summarize amino acids, um, we uh, have 20 amino acids. Um, 
and nature uses these 20 amino acids to build all proteins in living organisms. Um, they are very similar to each other with respect to each having an amino group uh, or an amine group, a carboxylic acid group, and a hydrogen and then a side chain. They do have three letter shorthands. They also have one letter shorthands and we can categorize them as either acidic, of which there were two, uh, basic, which there were two, and then we have our non-polar um, hydrophobics and our polar hydrophilics, which end up being both um, neutral. So um, another thing with this, I'm looking at this, this nature thing, um, just a reminder that in the human body, our um, bodies only use the left-handed, the L versions of the amino acids to build proteins in our body. Um, so what's going to become more obvious, this is more of an introduction into the uh, segue into the next little bit. The sequence of amino acids um, is very specific for each protein and it will determine how proteins function. And uh, proteins, uh, I talked about amino acids uh, kind of linking together as like each amino acid is a train car. And when we link them all together, we form proteins, um, which would be the entire chain, um, but they're not long linear structures. They, they take on very specific shapes and sometimes they're elongate and fibrous and sometimes they're globular. And it is intermolecular forces that will determine the shape of every single protein. Um, another thing to summarize, nonpolar side chains are very hydrophobic and polar acidic and basic are also, um, but they're not hydrophobic, they're very hydrophilic. So this concludes my um, video on how to classify the amino acids and how to recognize um, each of these classification categories when you're looking at the molecules. So thanks for watching.